All right. Um, I did a video once before on a, a photodiode amplifier um, that was used inside of um, the Hewlett Packard Optoelectronics division. And I have another one here. This one's a bit unusual. Um, we'll take a look at that. Well, the other one was quite unusual usual as well. So these are not, <clears throat> not exactly what I'm used to, but there's a big photodiode, uh, a one square centimeter photodiode, and some electronics that goes off to some type of instrument. So this was part of some type of test equipment, okay? So I've taken the screws out so we can pop the back off of this thing. All right, so um, so this thing has two op, two op amps in it. Now the interesting thing back in the day was that um, op amps came in round cans and you could get sockets that were circular in nature to match these parts, but um, well, for whatever reason, uh, we weren't using them. We were using these eight pin dip uh, sockets. So you had to bend all of the leads to, to go from a circular, uh, let me pull one out here. Maybe you can take a look at it. To go from a circular nature on the back to a, uh, <laughs> A, a linear spacing <laughs> to fit in these sockets. Now we actually had the machine shop build us uh, a little, I wish I still had one. It was, it was like a quarter inch thick piece, uh, piece of aluminum and it had little um, cones, uh, 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 countersinks, a bunch of countersinks. And you would try to, you would get these mostly where you needed to get them. And then you would jam them in this thing and it would straighten your leads out. It's like a pins, like a, a vacuum tube pin straightener, but it, for, for op amps, <laughs> we had the machine shop build those for us. Anyway, uh, let me put this one back in. Uh, but uh, you'll still see instruments and stuff built this way with this. Instead of having a round socket, they have a square socket. Anyway. Um, so let's take a look at the schematic of this thing and uh, let me point out some of the interesting features of it. All right, so we're going to start out here. First of all, the power comes in and it, it gets uh, smoothed a little bit, 47 ohms and 2.2 microfarad. So a little bit of conditioning on the power before it goes into the main, into the main circuit here. Uh, there's a photodiode and some type of transmittance amplifier. Um, so if we just take a look at this circuit, it's a standard transimpedance amplifier. Whatever current is generated in the photodiode is balanced by a current through the feedback loop, and that sets the voltage gain of this device. I've, I've covered these before, right? This happens to have a 37.5K resistor, which actually is on the case here. It says a 35.7K resistor. Also says there's a micro, one microfarad filter, but this one has a 0 0.001 microfarad filter, so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, and it has some adjustable gain here, and we'll get to that. Okay, so actually in the device, this is 4.7K, this is a 10K pot. Okay, so just given that, this thing would look very, very normal, okay? So uh, this is this op amp. Now, what does the other op amp do? Well, <laughs> the other op amp's a bit strange. So uh, let, me, let me draw it in first, okay? Okay, I've drawn in a little bit more of the circuit. Now, the other part of the circuit is over here. And um, here's the output. The output's going to come off of that first uh, transimpedance amplifier, and it's going to go off to the connector. Okay, so that's our output. But we're going to be basically summing in something else here. This is kind of a summing node coming in this way. It, it summed it into the uh, feedback loop here. So this seems really strange. This is just a voltage follower. So whatever voltage we put here will, will be here. Okay, this is just a unity gain, a non-inverting unity gain and uh, it will get summed into here. Now, why would we want to do that, okay? So let me, uh, let me get another piece of paper here just to draw on it. So people are used to having, um, let's just draw on a typical, uh, typical amplifier, okay? And um, if you want more and more gain, you make this one bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? Now, the other thing you can do is to 
is to do this, okay? We're going to put a voltage divider on the output. So instead of feeding back a voltage gain of one, right? If, if we tie these two wires together here, we're, we're, we're sending back 100% of its signal. But if we put a voltage divider here and maybe only send back half of its signal, right? then it will require the op amp to have twice as much voltage here to do the same job. If it gets divided by two, we need it at least two times here, and then we'll get the same amount here. And so this is a way to add extra gain in a system without changing this resistor, okay? And a lot of times you'll get to a point where you need, you'll calculate it, you'll need something like a, a 10 meg ohm resistor, and you don't have a 10 meg ohm resistor. Well, you can put a one meg ohm resistor in there and then use one tenth of the feedback loop and effectively multiply this by 10. And um, so you can, you can add these dividers on the output, okay? So, so imagine that that's, that's what we're gonna do in our circuit, okay? All right, so if this were ground, zero volts, then we would ground this one, and then we would have 4.7K and 1K, okay, that would be a voltage divider of, of uh, 5 to 1, okay, and then we're going to pick up something in the middle, so we can, we can fine-tune it in the middle here, but we'll basically kind of have a 5 to 1 um, difference in the voltage gain here, right? Um, so, uh, you could also instead of tying this to ground, you could tie it to some other voltage, so it wouldn't multiply as much, all right? I know that doesn't quite make sense, but what we're gonna do is um, we are going to take the output, all right? Sorry, I messed up down here. Uh, we are going to take the output, and we are going to um, put it into a filter, all right? Now this filter is 2.2 mega ohms and 60 microfarads. So that's a very, very slow filter. So you can sort of think of this as a time average, okay? And uh, this is like, a, you know, 120 seconds. I mean, it's a long time, okay? And we're going to actually come back around like this. Now, this doesn't make any sense at all, does it? <laughs> we're going to take the output and we're going to feed it back in in this weird divider network. So, um, if you imagine that you first turn this thing on and this capacitor is got zero volts on it, then this will be zero volts, and then this will be exactly that, uh, that circuit here. And so we will have a lot of gain because we have this divider on it, okay? But if you wait a very, very long time, and then the, uh, this voltage node here is exactly the output node, then output equals here, this is here. So now you have output here and you have output here, and you have the same voltage here and you have the same voltage here, okay? So now you've kind of reached some equilibrium. Uh, since these two voltages are the same, this divider action uh, is a bit funny. It's basically this resistor in parallel with that resistor in this feedback loop. So it's a really weird, a really, really weird thing. All right. So if you get some major change out here, let's say it goes dark. Okay, it just goes dark. We get zero current, and this node goes to zero volts, and it'll it'll finally, after 120 seconds, reach zero volts here, and then everything will be zero volts. And then suddenly, boom, you get a whole bunch of uh, light here. Well, this will be zero volts until it catches up, and it takes a long time to catch up. So we should see some type of uh, long-term uh, E reach to equilibrium. Now, this is a very slow thing, so if we modulate this, let's say that we have a light that's on 80%, but it flickers 20%, then the majority will get averaged by this filter, that 80% will reach some equilibrium, but then the fast um, modulation will still make it through this circuit, but it gets the DC average okay, we'll come around here. So it should 
sort of reach some, reach some equilibrium, but still allow it to modulate a bit, okay? So this circuit had me quite confused. So I did put it into um, microcap, which is a, uh, a simulator, and um, it does what I thought it was going to do. It starts out with high gain because we have this divider action here, and then after some period of time, about 120 seconds, it reaches the low uh, it still has amplification, but it's a lower amplification. So it starts at a high amplification, and then it dies down to a low amplification. But if there is some modulation on the input, you still see that. So you can see that here in the in the uh, in the simulation. Okay, I have uh, a certain amount of DC, and I have a certain amount of modulation. And you can see that it takes some time. It starts out with everything being zero volts. It takes some time for to reach equilibrium, but it still has uh, the ability to show some of that modulation. So I don't know what was intended for the circuit. I don't know if I would have designed that functionality this way, um, but it is a very strange, clever circuit. I've never seen one before. Um, so there you go. Yeah, that is our strange uh, detector here. Now there is no filter in the front here. This says that it might uh, have had a detector at one time. A Y-bar detector is the photopic response of the eye, and a lot of times these boxes were used for that, and this was probably recycled. It probably used to be a, uh, a Y-bar detector, but somebody crossed that off and says, no, it's just, a, just a, it's just a regular detector. It's to be used at 940 nanometers, which has nothing to do with the photopic response of the eye, so it just is radiometric, so it just has no filter at all. So it was to be used on some type of equipment that was measuring 940 nanometers and have some type of DC leveling. Uh, yeah, it's a strange, it's a strange beast.